Matthew chapter 10. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. So he, they're going to start doing what he's been doing. And cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness. That's an important thing. All manner. And all manner of disease. So it's 100%. Now the name of the twelve apostles are these. Now we've already discussed the, the apostles in the order. So far we know that there's Peter, Andrew, James, and John, and Matthew. Now whether this list is going to give the order that they're called, don't know, but it says the first, Simon, who was called Peter. Andrew, his brother. Now I think it's John, one of the Gospels mentions that Andrew went and got Peter. And brought Peter. James the son of Zebedee and John his brother. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas, that's the one who doubted. And Matthew the publican, that's the one we just read about in chapter 9. James the son of Alphaeus and Libius, whose surname was Thaddeus. Like that really helped us in names. Simon the Canaanite. Well, those are the ones who were supposed to be removed out of the land when Israel went in under Joshua. Now here's a Canaanite showing up as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Isn't that interesting? That'd be a Gentile. And Judas Iscariot who would betray him. Those twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying go not into the way of the gentiles have you got it by now matthew is a jewish book and they make it even more so and into any of the city of the samaritans now the samaritans were half breeds that was up north that was the capital of north israel and that would be half jewish half gentiles you would see them in the book of Nehemiah and Ezra. Enter ye not. So Jesus is sending them to the pure bred Jewish people, which some organizations in America hate the Jews, and Jesus came for the Jews. So you can't say you're a Christian and hate Jews. John 1 says he, he of his brethren the Jews but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel no church you got it even the Canaanite how's that unless Simon was a Jewish person that's living in the land but all right now here's the charge as ye go preach go in all the world and preach the gospel but saying by the way Matthew Mark 16 is at the end of Jesus death burial and resurrection this is before Jesus has even gone before Pilate before his death burial and resurrection saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand well that's been the message since John the Baptist the kingdom of heaven's at hand the kingdom of heaven's right there with Jesus Christ that's the literal physical kingdom. There's the king right there sending them out. But you remember the Pharisees have already rejected him. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. You don't see that today. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received freely give I haven't given you I have not paid you I have not given you no money you better not charge anybody now healers it's dollar signs dollar signs dollar signs provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purse don't you take any money don't take your purse don't bring any money you are going to rely on God and me. Totally. 
See, we just got finished with a great faith chapter. Not the faith chapter, but we just got finished reading about all these people that had faith. Now he's going to send out his 12 disciples. Let's see how much faith they're going to have. Only the 12. Chosen by Jesus Christ. Nor script for your journey. Neither two coats. Neither shoes. Nor your staves. That would be something that a cane leaning upon. That's wow, he's just sending them out like John the Baptist. A loin coat and locust and honey. You don't ever see these healers and these people that claim Matthew as the, as their gospel. You don't see him going out with nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just clothes on their back. Remember we already read about that? You know, the food and raiment and all that. That's what the Gentiles see. I'm going to make you guys go out and practice what I preached. For the workman is worthy of his meat. There's no preparation. Just go. And you're going to rely on God. And God is going to send people to help you. Remember Elijah? Elijah? The ravens brought him food. Remember the water dried out. He sent them to a widow woman who was going to prepare for her death and her son. <coughs> and God took care of them. Now the disciples are going to go through that very test. Nowhere do you see anybody following Jesus have a life of luxury. He told one guy, he says, listen, the foxes have holes, the birds in the nest have their, I mean the birds in the air have their nest. I don't have anything. We see that Peter had a house, a wife, and a mother-in-law. Okay, Peter, let's see you go without that. Notice who else is with the group. Verse 4, Judas Iscariot. He has the power of God to cast out devils, though he is will be one. He has the manner of sickness and disease to remove. So when you start bad-mouthing Judas to get away from your church doctrine, you got to realize he had the same power and the same living that the other disciples and Jesus Christ had. Alright, don't take nothing. No preparation. Now later on we go scripture with scripture. It's going to change after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? But right now, there's no Calvary. And into whatsoever city or town you enter. Inquire who it is is worthy. Just don't stay anywhere. Go into that city and inquire. Find out who loves the Lord Jesus. Knows about him. Credentials. And there abide till ye go then. Find that worthy house. Go in that house. And live amongst that house until you're done with your ministry there. When you come into a house, salute it. Be proper. Be nice. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. Peace be unto this house. My Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, it wouldn't be my Savior, but my Lord Jesus Christ. But if it be not worthy... Let your peace return to you. They don't take care of you. They don't want it. They're, okay. I remove my peace off this house. You see where the Catholics get it from? You know, Peter the First. You don't ambassador the church religion and the dogmas and the traditions of our church. We won't put our peace. That's why he goes around. That's why the Pope goes around. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be this land. Remember, he's supposed to be the, the, the Pope following the Apostle Peter, the disciple Peter, and everything that Peter does. Well, here's one of the things he does. Peace, 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 peace. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. And whosoever shall not receive you, they won't take you into their house, because watch, nor hear your words. There's two different things there. They're not going to receive you. They're not going to hear your words. Remember that city that with the, the hogicides? 
They come out. Jesus, get out of here. Okay, goodbye. See you. When you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. They, didn't they would not receive the disciple. They would not receive the word of God. I know a couple people who've done that, me including. And there were tragic results of shaking up. Be careful how you use that verse. Very I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. What's the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? Complete, demolished, vacated, gone from fire and judgment of God. In the day of judgment, then for that city. It will be tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment. Well, if any disciples did that, there were... You know, there was no fire. There. It didn't say fire. It said the judgment. Anybody who rejects the disciple and the word that the disciple is going to speak about the kingdom from Jesus Christ is going to stand a hard judgment at the great white throne judgment. Psalm of Gomorrah will get off lighter than what these people will. Psalm of Gomorrah never heard Jesus Christ, literally. These people are hearing all about Jesus. See, Jesus Christ has been publicized throughout the whole land. Somebody's got to hear about him. So when these disciples go out there, the common knowledge is Jesus Christ. And they don't want you because of Jesus and those words. Solomon Gomorrah had nothing to know about the Son of God. But these people do. Now watch this. <clears throat> Behold, I send you forth as sheep <laughs> in the midst of wolves. Wolves are a natural enemy of sheep. And Jesus says, I'm going to send you out in the midst of them. I thought he was warning us about wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah, he warns us, but he doesn't stop us from going out there to them. God does not stop the Jehovah Witnesses from coming to my house, even with my wife putting a sign out there right by the front door. You practically have to trip over it says Jesus is God, and they still come to the door. Thank God God has given me enough Bible knowledge and wisdom and understanding to deal with those wolves. And they will come to a house that has scripture all over the car. They have scripture all over the front of the yard. They have scripture on the door they have to knock on. What do you think they're going to do when they come to a house that has nothing like that? You ever think about that? Be therefore wise as serpents. Isn't that a great verse? Be as wise as Satan. That serpent knew how to deceive man in Genesis 3, didn't he? He knew who to go and how to do. Jesus has told those disciples, you do the same thing. Paul said to one of the churches, I caught you with guile. I caught you with a little trickery, didn't I? Now that's one of the things that, that is great when you're dealing with public witnessing. You catch them up. You put them in such a spot that they hung them on themselves. And you just hand them the rope. Say, here, go hang yourself. And harmless as doves. What, what can a dove do to you? Sheep, wolves, serpents, and doves. That's a great combination. And the only one that can't hurt, hurt the sheep is the doves. But he doesn't stop them from going out there. And he doesn't stop the wolves from coming in. You better be able to handle it. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, right and divine the word of truth. The disciples don't have the Bible. They just got the Old Testament. 
they got to live by the faith of the word of God through Jesus Christ. But, but beware of men. For they will deliver you up to the councils and will score speech, beat you with whips in their synagogues. Now you say that never happened. Yes, it did. The book of Acts. Jesus is now prophesying to them. This is the book of Acts laid out now. From the time that Jesus left them and went to be seated at the right hand of the Father, his ascension. Then they're starting to be put in jail. They're starting to be beaten. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake. The book of Acts. For a testimony against them. The kings. The governors. And the Gentiles. There's those evil wicked Gentiles again. Listen the Gentiles don't get into Acts chapter 8. The Ethiopian. Acts chapter 10. Cornelius. And then when Paul finds, you know, he's dealing with a few Gentiles. But when he finds, tells Israel, hey, listen, I'm done with you. Your blood be upon your own. I'm, I'm going to the Gentiles. And when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. And this is a true statement. When they spoke. And it's a true statement even amongst Christians today. But you got to read and study your Bible to get that to happen. Listen, I've been many times witnessing, doing something, in an argument with somebody. And those scriptures come up because I've read the scriptures. I have infiltrated my heart with the scriptures. You can't go out there and not even open up a Bible and say, okay, here I go. I'm going to go for the, with a sword and the Holy Spirit. No. For it is not ye that speak, now get this, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. First real revelation of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit given to the disciples. He's going to breathe on them. They're going to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon them in Acts chapter 2. After Acts chapter 2, they start getting in trouble. Once that Holy Spirit comes in and settles in on them, man, they're put in jail. And What Bible do they have to open up? None. And the brother shall deliver the brother to death. That had to happen in, in Acts. Happened through the dark ages. And the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Books of Acts. Dark ages. And you shall be hated. Now here's the point. Verse 20. Oh, that's going on in America today. And you shall be hated of all men. All men. The Jews. The book of Acts. For my name's sake. There are children turning their parents into the police today because the, the, the schools tell them that that's how they can get under the dominant, demurring. Uh, the parents are being too harsh on them. So just call the police and tell them, you know, they raise their hand to you and they'll take you out. But that's not in the name of Jesus. In the book of Acts, they told Peter, don't you even mention that name. Don't you preach that name. And he shall endure to the end, shall be saved. That is not church age. He shall endure to the end, shall be saved. That's not the salvation I got. Something wrong with that one. But when they persecute you in this city, Flee into another. All right, get out. America it doesn't like the Bible. America doesn't like God. America doesn't like Jesus Christ. Then we ought to go. When they start persecuting us, say, like, okay, goodbye. We'll take our money somewhere else. You know, there's some there's some countries out there where the leader of the country loves the Bible and loves Jesus. Why don't we go over there? 
Oh, we're going to have our cell phones. We won't have air conditioning. We won't have steak. We won't have a restaurant if we went over there, would we? Would we? Yeah, because we're Gentiles. We care for food, raiment, and everything. You say you get persecuted, flee. I'm going to take up a gun. Where's it? Uh, where's that? Let's see. Let me find print somewhere in there. Hold on, let me get a magnifying glass. Flee ye to another, for verily I say unto you, ye shall have not gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. I don't understand that. Man, because they went to they went to Israel, they they started in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, outer parts of the world in the book of Acts, and Jesus hasn't come back yet. But this is definitely the book of Acts. Now, the disciple is not above his master. Don't think you're, you're so hot. Don't be so proud. Nor the servant above his Lord. There's a chain of command. There's authority. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. You're a representative of who's in charge of you. If they have called the ma master of the house, Jesus, back over here in 934, Jesus, the master of the house, Beelzebub, Satan, the Lord of the flies, how much shall they call them of his household, his father? Listen, guys, listen to me. If they called me Satan, before I send you out, they're going to call you some nasty names. Don't be offended. You don't know yet, guys. They're going to scourge me. They're going to pull my beard. They're going to spit upon me. They're going to put the thorns on my brow. They're going to nail me to a cross. If they're going to do that to me, you better wait to see what they're going to do to you in the book of Acts. You know what Jesus has told you? Or these guys? He told you a verse that hasn't been written yet. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yes, even before the church age. Fear them not, therefore. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be... Listen, God will reveal it in either judgment. The only way God's going to hide it, which has not been written yet for them, is 1 John 1 9. If they don't put it after Jesus dies, under the blood of Jesus Christ, that sin will be charged to them. If they kill any of these guys before Jesus dies, they're in the Old Testament. They're charged with a murder. They will be never or has ever been a sacrifice for murdering somebody. What I tell you in darkness, that speak in speak ye in the light. All right, what I'm telling you right now, you go tell them. There's no secret handshake. There's no secret society. There's no secret work. Bring it out in the light. And what ye hear in the ear. That preach ye upon the housetop. Look at that street preaching. Walk up on someone's house, get on their housetop, and start preaching. Jesus would never do what you're doing. You're turning people away. Peter, Andrew, James, Zebedee, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Lydia, Simon, and even Judas. Get up on that housetop and preach the word. How's that? And we're a couple chapters from the Sermon on the Mount. And fear not them which can which kill the body. Isn't this a great charge he's sending these disciples out? Don't take nothing with you. They're going to beat you. They're going to scourge you. And they might even kill you. And they're going to make fun of you. Oh yeah, sign me up.
And yet, this is what happens to evangelists. But are not able to kill the soul. So there's a difference between body and soul. You can kill the body, but you can't kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. Who said this? Jesus never said anything about hell, did he? You got a red letter Bible there. He said hell? Wow! Jesus said hell. Oh. What would Jesus do? So what? Je what? What Jesus is now telling us? There's only one. I'm going to say person. One person that control your soul. That is God. And God said, for the church age, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Nothing else. You can't go to a man and have your soul be redeemed. You can't go to a priest. That soul has to be redeemed by God, Acts 20, 28, the blood of God. And Jesus spoke about hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? That would be the, the sparrows probably used for the sacrifice. They're selling the, the sparrows for farthings. And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. God sees the funeral and death of a bird. How's that? Oh, we got this whale that washed up on the beach. It just died. The guy's like, man, I just saw 3,000 shrimp just die today in that whale's mouth. <laughs> Okay, I, I've seen it. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. This is the same God that has all the stars numbered and named. Can Allah do that? Can Buddha do that? I don't think he had one of them didn't have hair at all. Gandhi, well, one of them. You realize all the hairs on your head. Who's he talking to? Men, right? Jewish men. What were the Jewish men supposed to have on their heads? Hair and a beard, right? That's a whole lot of hair. My heavenly father knows all about me and has everything counted. You can't go into surgery and have something removed without God's okay, minus that bone. I know right with it. I know right I had a bone removed on my foot. I don't know where that bone is. God does. God knows your body and how many bones and how many pieces are in it. All. All your cells. Fear ye not, therefore. Now here's a verse to put for PETA. Please eat tasty animals. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Now it's funny because I got the note here that the farthing is worth one the two cent and there's a nice song out there someone say that your body's only worth a dollar ninety eight according to God it's worth a lot more you're worth well, wait a minute I'll tell you you know how much you're worth to God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he gave his only begotten son that's how much you're worth Acts 20 28 the blood of God What's the price of the blood of God? You know what's going on with these sparrows? They were using them in the temple sacrifices. They would wring off their necks and drain the blood. I'll tell you what you're worth. You're worth the one who's speaking. My blood it will not pay for those sparrows. It will pay for you, gentlemen, and the people you're going out to witness to. 
That just shows you God says man is more important than the animals. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. 2 Timothy 2, 11, 13. Him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. That's, that, that'll go good today. You could use that today. Jesus said, I Jesus said that the Holy Spirit and Jesus himself are praying to the Father for us right now. But if you don't confess Jesus Christ, he's not going to confess you to the Father. You go out and witness, go in all the world. Father, you see what that guy's doing? He's mentioned the gospel. He's mentioned what I did upon Calvary. You hear him saying that? And Father probably turns and says, Yeah, but I hear nobody else speaking your name, son. I know, but he is. He's ours. I will also confess my father, which is, he's ours. He's mentioning my name. He's preaching the gospel. He's telling the lost people. He's he's doing what the Bible says to do. Isn't it great? It's great, son, that he's glorifying your name, but the people aren't. But he's ours, Father. But whosoever shall deny me before men. This is the contra of verse 32. Him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. So... Muslims and everybody else who rejects Jesus Christ when it comes to Jesus Christ going up to the Father, I don't know him. That will go to for the for the great white throne judgment. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. Ready for this one? I am not. I am not. I came not to send peace, but a sword. You know where Islam goes with the problem with that? They use a literal sword. What's Ephesians say say about our sword as far as our armor? It's the word of God, Hebrews. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharpened into any edge. This is the sword where he, he didn't he say uh where is it? He says, I tell you darkness speak ye in the light. Verse 14, if they will not hear your words, his words are being, it's all about the words. Haven't you ever had a funny reaction when you bring a Bible to someone, to someone, you're sitting in the lunchroom, you bring a Bible, you sit it down, all of a sudden you got an empty table. Where'd everybody go? I had a funny one time, my son and I, we went, we go knocking on the door, we go all around. And we carry our Bibles in our lap. I mean, our, on our side, we knock on the door. Everybody in the whole house would scatter. You know they're home. We got the black book. They don't want to hear it. For I am come to set a man of veterans, that is, disagreement, state of enmity against his father. And the daughter against her mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He's, he's coming to divide families. Jewish families. When a Jew receives Jesus Christ, he is eliminated from the family, from the fellowship of the Jewish people. They will even have a mock funeral. I know two Jews that their family has done that. A Jewish mother, when their their son is away, whatever it life, military, whatever, it, she will keep a candle in the window. A lot of times, if you'll see like a, like electric, they'll use electric ones today. You see electric candle in the window. That, that would probably be a Jewish mother who has a child who's gone out in life. If he were to come back and say, "I received Christ as their Savior," she will unplug or blow out that candle. He's dead. That candle symbols life to them. The light. A Jew comes home and says he received Jesus Christ as a savior. Will break the family. 
know why there was such trouble in in the book of Acts? Because the families were breaking away from those who had received Christ. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Speaking about Jews. And it's true. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Your mother or father doesn't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. You better give in to Jesus Christ and not them. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. I got a note here, Genesis 22. The one you are to love is to be Jesus Christ above all when no one else wants to serve him. And a lot of times in your Christian walk, when you want to do right, you will be alone. You'll look back and you'll find a lot of your Christian friends even gone. And he that taketh not his cross. Can you imagine what the disciples are thinking here? Take up your cross. That was a torture device of the Roman government. He has not even gone to the cross yet, folks. You want me to execute myself? That's what he's saying. That's what they're understanding. And follow after me is not worthy of me. You got to lay down your life. That's what he's telling them. Your life may not be what God wants you to do or what you want to do. You got to lay it down and give it to God. Because he says, he that findeth his life shall lose it. Paul says, you got to die daily. I mean, I'm going to go fight Satan with a water, water pistol. Or hell. I got enough trouble fighting my own body with my sins. Never mind anything else. I got enough hard time telling my body, no, stop that. Cut it out. Don't do that. Don't think that. I got to put this corpse back in the ground. It keeps coming alive. This body's supposed to be dead in the ground. And it keeps coming, keeps coming as a zombie. And he that loses his life for my sake properly done shall find it better make sure if you're going to lose your life you do it right you do it for God many people have given up their lives the crusaders gave up their lives for the church not for God and are in hell today he that receiveth you the apostles, the disciples, receiveth me. He that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me, God the Father. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. I have no idea what that is. He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. I have no idea. That's not church age rewards. We get crowns. We don't get crowns because we're a prophet. We don't get crowns because we're a righteous man. We get crowns based upon our works, upon what we've done for Jesus Christ. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones, who are the little ones? Where do they come from? You ever read that and say, wait a minute, he's been talking to the disciples. And in verse 4, Whosoever shall give to the drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in my name of a disciple. Only in the name of a disciple. That's the 12 we just mentioned. Here, I give you this little cup of water in the name of Peter. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Works. 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 
I'm thankful people give us water and all that, but I hope you got the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're saved, and you, I've had water given to us three or four times. If they're saved, that credits it to Jesus Christ. But we're looking at some of the disciples here, which I don't understand. It's based upon the foundation of works.